Hello, my name is Ryan Alexander. I'm the Director of Sports Science here at Atlanta United. One of the key roles of my job here at Atlanta United is our match day preparation. The entire routine that we have our players go through to build up to our competitions. There's so much anticipation of playing in front of 70,000 people at Mercedes-Benz Stadium here in Atlanta. But ultimately what our job is, is to help guide our players through those five, six, seven hours leading up to the match to help them get there so that they feel as if they are the most prepared possible that they can be to play. A lot of variables go into that, such as being home or away, travel that we went through to get to that place, uh, when our last match was leading up to the match that we're currently looking to, as well as when our next competition is going to be. Specifically, how we as a staff would like to guide and inform our players is based around that four to five hour period leading up to our game. Roughly four and a half to three and a half hours up to our match, we like to open up our meal to our players. We like to have a window so that our players can individualize their own preparation. Some players like to eat a little bit earlier, around that four and a half hour mark leading up to a match. They like to eat a full meal, balanced with carbohydrates, proteins, and fats, so they have the energy to play for the full 90 minutes. Other players don't like to eat a full meal. They like to eat closer to that three and a half to three hour mark. We want to allow those players the freedom to eat and prepare so that psychologically they also feel confident in how they prepare nutritionally for the game. Leading up to the hour before kickoff, that's when we really start to hone in on our individual player routines. Some players that maybe like to step out on their own into our side room where they can foam roll and they can do individual stretches prior to even leading out to the field and going and having the team warm up. Other players like to remove themselves by putting headphones in and sitting in their locker and just finding their own separate space. The reality is, is that each individual has made it to the professional level utilizing their own routines. We as a staff want to respect those routines and we want to help guide them and optimize those routines to the best of their ability. Once we get to the team portion of the warm-up, there's four specific areas that we like to hone in on. There's the physical preparation portion, there's the technical familiarity, there's the match simulation, and then the position specific warm-up. Each of those are segmented by about six minutes. Our overall team warm-up takes about 26 and a half minutes. We want to make sure that those 26 and a half minutes leading up to that time when we have to go back in and change our kits for the game, run as smooth as possible. The physical preparation portion of our warm-up is exactly that. We're looking to physically prepare our players to perform once that first whistle blows. We want to increase their core temperature and take them through match specific movements so that their joints and muscles are familiar with the intensity and the progressive intensity that will lead them into the match. The technical familiarity portion of the warm-up is designed to be very simple. It allows the players to get familiar with the surface, familiar with the ball, familiar with the venue and the sight, the visuals of how they'll see the ball being passed, and that's all designed in very small, small dimensions. We then extend that familiarity portion to long balls. We want to increase the intensity of the technical portion of our warm-up by extending them over 30 to 40 meters of distance and allowing them to strike balls. The tempo, the rate at which they strike balls, is their own selection. From there, we lead into the most physically demanding portion of our warm-up, the match simulation. We play 5v5 in a 25 by 25 area for a minute and a half to two minutes. That's always going to vary based on the temperature and how our players are feeling and the, the match density leading up to that match. After that, we decrease the intensity of our warm-up again and we go into position-specific work. That allows our attacking players to gain confidence striking the ball on goal, our external players to gain confidence crossing into specific areas within the box, it allows our back four and our central midfield players to perform technical position-specific movements with the required coaching staff. After that, we begin to make our way back to the locker room, but before we go back to the locker room, we perform our final, most intense portion of the warm-up where we complete three accelerations across a specified distance. That's the final intensity that we would like to achieve. The body has now had 26 minutes to get progressively warmed up and we want to have them achieve that final intensity before going back into the locker room and preparing to play. 